Okay, you probably know how to do this already, but I've had a couple of emails from people and someone in my family's actually asked me how to offload digital photos from your camera to the computer and the best way to do it. So I'm just gonna quickly show you two simple ways to do that using USB cables. Um, and just to explain that you normally get the cable required in the box when you buy the camera. If you've bought it secondhand, you didn't get these cables, the chances are you're going to need one of these. One of the ends is a USB cable or the USB connection which goes into your computer. You should have USB ports on the computer. And the other one is a small kind of digital USB. It's the, it's the smaller end of the, the, the cable that goes into your camera or the card reader. And if you buy a card reader, which we'll show you in a second, then you should get this cable with that as well. So you normally get the, the correct cables and accessories to do all the work when you buy one of these bits of equipment. So quickly, I'm just gonna show you how to offload photos from the camera to the computer directly using one of these cables. The smaller end should fit into your camera somewhere. If you've got a DSLR, it's got a USB connector, which you just simply plug into the camera there and then switch the camera on. So we're connected to the camera easily enough. Then you just simply connect this into your USB port on the computer. And what will happen is, as soon as you do that, your software on your computer should find that card and it should accept it. So here we are, it's come up with an autoplay box which says Canon EOS 5D Mark II and it gives you various uh, options to download the photos. You can either import them using Windows, if you've got specific software you've loaded onto your computer for your specific camera, then you can use that facility. Uh, you can open using Photoshop or whatever other imaging software you've got on your computer. Now, what I normally tend to do is just open the device to view the files, which will open up a new window, and there's the hard drive there. You can probably see in the background it also comes up as a separate hard drive, um, depending on what camera you've got. So let's just go into there, and you have to navigate your way to the actual photos through various folders and there we are. We've got two lovely photos I've just taken outside. It's a very wet day, so I'm not doing this outside. Um, so once you've got those photos there, you have a couple of options. Now you need to create your own folder somewhere within another hard drive. And to do that, you literally right click anywhere within the hard drive, add new folder. I can't do it on this because it's the card, but it will ask you to rename the folder and you can create a new folder. And it could be photos called rainy days or whatever you want to call it. but that's where you're going to put these photos to. To select these two photos, you click and drag to select them, and then you right click and you've got a couple of options. You can either copy or cut those photos. You, again, you probably know this, but it's just worth reiterating. If you copy them, then you would paste them into the new folder you've created. And by copy and pasting, you're not deleting the originals off the card. You're just duplicating them to wherever you want them to go. If you were to cut those photos, you can see they've gone faded and then when you paste them to the new folder they will be taken from the, the card and posted to the new um, folder. Now I normally by way of security copy and paste first and then erase the images from the card because if you if you cut and paste straight away and then you have a uh, electrical fault or something like that and your computer goes down or shuts down or crashes then you may lose one of those photos as it's transferring whereas if you copy and paste them you're, you're not actually taking them from the card you're just copying them so I recommend you copy and paste from the actual card first and then go back in and delete using the uh, format option but you can see there it's very simple very easy to do with the camera you're connected to the camera but make sure you've got good batteries when you're um, when you're transferring images from your camera to the computer, make sure your batteries are fully charged because again, if you're halfway through a transfer and using the cut and paste method, your camera batteries may run out halfway through and you could lose one photo, it could become corrupt. So first of all, copy and paste, but secondly, make sure you've got enough battery power in the camera. Now, the next option to do, to use, is to forget the camera altogether. Let's take the cable out again, let's close that. And then, the other option is to get yourself a card reader. You can get these from any kind of stores. Uh, I think dispensing chemists use them, sell them photograph shops, for photographic shops, camera shops. You can buy them online. There's loads of different makes and models of these. Just get a multi-card reader. Uh, and it, this one, for example, I think it's 14 cards it reads. It's got X memory, memory stick, compact flash, uh, secure digital MMC cards. It'll do them all. So what you need to do with this it's quite handy because most of these card readers use the same USB cable. So the small end that went into the camera, you just plug it into the USB card reader like that. You plug the other end into the computer 
and that's now connected. And then you take your card from the camera and just put it into the card reader, like so. As soon as you do that, again, your computer should read what's on the card and you'll come up with the same box, but this time it's not called Canon 5D, it's called EOS Digital H, which is the name of the actual card. And all you do again, you get the same options plus a few extras, depending on what software you've got on your computer. You can import the computer, import the pictures, view the pictures, create a disc. Uh, you can do all sorts using Lightroom. Whatever software you've got will come up here and it'll ask you which one you want to use to import the photos. Now, obviously, you can use whichever one you've, you want, whichever one you'll become familiar with, whichever one you're, is your favourite way of doing it. But once again, I normally just use the open folder to view files. And once again, you have got to navigate through to the photos and they're there again. And all you have to do is do the same thing, cut and paste or copy and paste. Um, and that's really basically it. The best thing to do is get help, get yourself a card reader. Because like I said, with the camera, you're, you've got the problem of um, wasting the battery life and also the battery's running out during a, a transfer process. Card readers are great because you can take them everywhere. If you've got a laptop, you can use it with that. You can use it with your main PC, all that kind of thing. So I'd recommend if you haven't got one already, get hold of a card reader and make sure it's the one that fits your camera as well uh, with the USB cable. And like I say, have a make sure you get the one that fits the card as well. Some cameras take SD cards, some take compact flash cards. Make sure that the card reader takes the, the, the cards that your camera uses. But a multi-card reader is normally the best thing because you may buy new cameras later on and you'll know that this is compatible with those. So I hope that helps. It's just a very quick way to show you how to offload photos onto your computer. But remember to, when you are offloading them, create a new folder by right-clicking, selecting new folder, and then rename it something that has something to do with these photos, such as rainy day outside or the date or something like that. But I hope that helps. Uh, have some practice and we'll see you soon.